You maniacs! You finally did it! Thank you! Thank you all to heaven! <laughs> Alright, I know it was pretty much the opposite of what Charles Heston's character said, but hey, they made a really good sequel again. Yep. So, hi, welcome to End Credit Reviews on episode of After the Credits. This is Tyler from End Credit Reviews. And Luke, who I haven't, I haven't been here in a while. Yeah, that's right. You haven't been here since our uh, Blair Witch review. Yeah. Yeah, remember our? Uh, I remember the whole joke about um, the old and I thing. Well, no, not just that, but also the uh, the uh, Blair Witch is Harriet Tubman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we definitely need to get a lot more people doing this again. You know. Um, but anyway, this is our review on War for the Planet of the Apes. Now, this is the mm -hmm. third in the newer Planet of the Apes movies. But I think before we talk about this one, I think we should briefly mention our thoughts on the other Planet of the Apes movies. If you haven't seen my review on those, I made them a few years ago. I, I'll probably put some links in the description below. But anyway, the first one with Charles Heston from the 60s, I think it was based off a book. And I think that was a good one. I feel like it was kind of slow paced. Yeah, I'll be honest, I haven't seen the entire thing. I've only seen about half of it on TV once, so I can't really speak on that movie too much. Okay. I just really hate the fact that just about every home video, like, box set or cover for the home video format, the artwork shows the ending. Yeah. The big spoiler. I about that. How many movies can you think of actually show the spoiler plastered on, like, the poster and that? <laughs> There's not many. I mean, seriously, it always frustrated me. Like, why would you do that? Um, it's like the equivalent of showing, like, uh, Peter mourning over Gwen Stacy in, like, the Amazing Spider-Man 2's cover for, like, home video. Why would you do that? It's like, it's like putting a photo of Darth Vader on the front of Empire Strikes Back that says, Who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah, really, the yeah. tagline, the slogan or whatever. And so then there were several other kind of sequels in the 70s, and on average they were okay. I don't remember the exact name, I, order of I them. I remember there was Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, Yeah. Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Yeah. and I don't remember the others. Escape the Planet of the Apes, Yeah. War, uh, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, Yeah. that's my best guess on it. But yeah, I think one of those was like, one of those kind of, you ever seen one of those movies from the 70s where they thought, oh, the weirder the better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like a boy and his dog was like <laughs> one of those. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, in the early 2000s, we had the reimagining by Tim Burton with mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg. And honestly, I think that movie kind of gets too much hate. It's not a good movie, but I think I can blame the studio for kind of rushing that into production, according to what Mark Wahlberg said in an interview about it. Um, that was originally planned to be the new series, right? Until it just didn't do well. Yeah. Critically and financially, and then they had to reboot it again like 10 years later. Yeah, I mean, financially it did fine, but when it came to critics and from like audiences and critics alike, it was too mixed. And Tim Burton in an interview said that I'd rather jump out of a window than make another yeah. one. Wow. I mean, the makeup by Rick Baker in that movie was awesome. And that, and Tim Roth. I mean, yeah. was it Tim Roth? Tim Roth, yeah. Yeah, it was an awesome villain. And, I think, uh, I, yeah. Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah, that was that was her uh, first movie before she became infamous for all the uh, Tim Burton movies she's in. Mm. I don't know. Maybe you can kind of blame her for his downward spiral in the early in the two thousands or whatever. But they're not together anymore. So who oh, knows? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so much for her career. Yeah. But, <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. Oh yeah, that speaking of women, remember that actress from the Planet of the Apes movie, the um, blonde chick who's kind of like the Nova character. She was in Kangaroo Jack, and uh, yeah, she's a very attractive woman. And <laughs> I'm surprised you don't really see her anymore. It's like what happened. Uh, but also, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I did like. Um, well, besides the villain in that movie, I also, maybe I'll show a photo of it, but I did dress up for General Thade for Halloween when I was a kid, <laughs> and that, like, I thought it was a cool villain, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to dress up like that. So, then, of course, we had, in this decade, we had a rebooted Planet of the Apes movies. We had Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and now we have War for the Planet of the Apes. Personally, shouldn't Dawn and Rise be the other way around? Yeah, that's a, that's a point of contention. They're like, 
how can there be a dawn after the rise? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I felt like that was one of those performances where I'm like, okay, James Franco is kind of tolerable. Yeah. The movie was kind of slow paced a bit. And I don't know, the whole like the villain was like the cliche greedy businessman was kind of overly cliched. But I thought the CG in that one was kind of a mixed bag. Because I remember watching it with my friends in high school and I remember uh, my friend Steven, who's not here with us, he was kind of busy at the moment, said that the CG looks so bad. If you go back today, <laughs> it doesn't hold up. Like, Dawn and this movie are done by Weta. I'm not sure if the first one was done by Weta, but they're Might the ones have been. Did Lord of the Rings. So, and yeah. It, they're, the CG in these past two have been, like, impeccable. A lot better, yeah. Um, especially when we get to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I think it was nominated for Best Special Effects. Yeah, I don't think it won, though. Yeah. Sadly. But I do think that Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is definitely better than mm -hmm. the previous one. Again, it was kind of slow-paced a bit, but I felt like it left more of an emotional impact. Different director. It was um, yeah. Matt Reeves did this one and the last one, and uh, and this guy one. Named Rupert Sanders did the first one, who he just did Ghost in the Shell. He's the one that like got in trouble for like uh, wasn't he like dating? Uh, wait, 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 no, Twilight? I, no, that's not him. That's a different director. You're thinking oh, of, I'm thinking of um, that guy directed Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah, directed Ghost in the Shell. I, I, I know his name's Rupert. It's Rupert something. It's not Rupert Sanders. Then it's someone else. He, we probably look it up yeah, on IMDb. It's Rupert something. Okay, it's some other guy. Um, but yeah, this guy is really. I'm really liking this guy named Ra Matt, Matt Reeves. Matt yeah, Matt Reeves. Yeah, yeah. Cloverfield is his best movie. I would have to say. And then these other Planet of the Apes sequels, really good work. I haven't seen the remake of. Let Me In, was it? It was like, uh... uh let the Right One In? Well, that was yeah, the original, original movie, yeah. yeah. And I'm really excited this guy's directing the next Batman movie. I'm like, yes! And he's, and he's rewriting the script now. and Because he wrote this movie with another writer. Yeah, I love the fact that they're pretty much going for, like, a whole, like, mystery. Like, a noir style. Kind of like, um... More detective stuff. Well, yeah, if you've seen Batman Mask of the Phantasm, that movie was a lot like a detective story, which I love that idea of it. So, I know it's been about over seven minutes long, mm. but or maybe roughly around that time, but we finally get to our review on it. So, War for the Planet of the Apes, again, takes place time after the previous one. And this one, of course, we have Andy Serkis playing the character of Caesar. And basically, after some military-like humans go after him, they accidentally, well, mild spoiler here, kill his family... He decides to go after revenge against a colonel played by Woody Harrelson. Mm -hmm. And it's very much a quest to try to save his people. And this is one that I think is likely the best in the trilogy I've seen so far. Yeah, I think it's maybe a little better than Dawn. I definitely think it's at least to par with it. Um, but like, I feel like some of the marketing is a little bit misleading a little bit because some of the posters show like a huge army of humans versus a huge army of apes which yeah. was not in the movie like it's the title war is kind of debatable about if that's because i mean i know the war has been going on for years but this was more of a small like skirmish yeah but, i agree this movie had more in common with like schindler's list than it had saving than like you know saving private ryan yeah or whatever although i wasn't really expecting saving private ryan levels of action me neither um, but yeah, this movie again delivers on the drama very well. Now, I felt like one actress that was, you know, kind of, I didn't really know about, I think she was like a new actress who played this little girl, who, um, I thought was kind of clever. They say like, oh, this is Nova, which if you've mm -hmm. seen the original Planet of the Apes movies, that is, um, you know, the character that Charles Heston's character hooks up with. I thought, oh, okay, that's kind of clever. In fact, they also hint at the whole, like, scarecrow that we see in the other films. Yeah. Where they show, like, other, you know, apes and that. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. I like, I'm liking this, and re I these do references. And like how they kind of explain why they stopped talking. Because, like, the oh, humans yeah. couldn't talk in, in the old movies. So yeah. So they kind of hinted at that. Yeah, they explain why that happened, which I really like that. That was really good writing. I like that a lot. Um, Woody Harrelson, what did you think of him as the villain? Uh, I felt like he was kind of didn't have a lot to do. Like, I mean, he was in the movie, but like he, if you counted his lines, he probably didn't have a ton of lines. Yeah. So he could probably could have been used a little bit better, but I think he served the plot well. Yeah, no. And I heard recently they quit smoking weed and I'm just saying, you know, Woody Harrelson seems kind of really uh, edgy and violent. I think maybe you should go back to it. But what do you think? <laughs> yeah. And, and then, and then in the movie, when I saw him with the, with the alcohol, I'm like, 
does he play like a drunkard in every movie? Like Zombieland and then But he's not going for Twinkies. He's oh, not yeah. <laughs> but like Yeah, I was expecting a big stash of Twinkies in this bunker for much. Or in uh, Hunger Games, wasn't he a drunkard in Oh that yeah, game? he was. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like and then he was the crazy guy in 2012. Oh so yeah. He's always playing Oh yeah, things. and uh, I don't know if he's seen Bird Demic, but he was in that oh, one too. Really? Yeah, I, I think he had like know. a really bad wig on. Oh god. Yeah, this is a much better post like apocalyptic movie where the fate of humanity is on the edge and there's like a virus spreading around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I should just watch that with some friends of mine just to like um roast it pretty much. <laughs> I still haven't like seen Nintendo that, 64 it. graphics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um but also with the other ape characters, I thought it was kind of funny how the other apes that are working with the humans are named Donkey. So I'm thinking to myself, is their name technically Donkey Kong? Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. Like, what are they referencing when they call him Donkey? Like, is Donkey Kong a thing in this universe? Well, yeah, it's in our universe, but um, good thing. What? Hopefully, it's not like a reference to Shrek. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I um really uh hope that sh- another Shrek movie doesn't happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it is. No, yeah, you maniacs! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Played Charles Sestin clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then, <laughs> um, speaking of a uh, comedy, I'm trying to remember the ape's name that they introduced, but it's kind of like the comedic relief. Um, I just felt like out of all the ape characters, he was the one that was probably rendered the least impressive. I would have to say. I was like, yeah, he looks okay. Yeah, he, he kind of was a. He kind of didn't really serve the plot all that much. He kind of was just thrown into the mix. And he's played by Steve Zahn, who I think is a really good actor. Um, Who's he been in? I, Steve Zahn is. You remember the guy from Daddy Daycare? The one that's got like. He looks kind of like David Spade a little bit. I haven't seen that movie in ages, but. Yeah, he's been in a lot more than that, but I just can't. I think he. He played a voice in um, uh, Chicken Little. I think he played the voice of the pig. Yeah, he was, he was okay. I've seen that. that one. It's it's not a very good Disney movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely uh not uh Zach Braff's best movie. In fact, actually, scratch that. He hasn't really made too many good <laughs> stuff. But <laughs> I'm not a big fan of him. No. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's definitely have a fan base because of Scrubs, which pretty much inspired a generation again to the healthcare industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But anyway, back to the movie itself. I felt like the opening to the scene was awesome because we basically see kind of like some text to kind of recap the audience on the other movies and also the shot where they show like the army coming in like we see like text on the back of their helmets. Yeah, like monkey killer and yeah I think I forgot what the other one said but there was it felt kind of like apocalypse now which is which is fitting because I mean later they say ape apocalypse now. Yeah so. <laughs> yeah probably an influence for this movie I would have to say. I felt like this movie kind of starts off really good in the beginning. It kind of, I don't know, kind of slowed down a bit in the middle. Yeah. But then at the end, it definitely picked up speed again, which I liked. Um, I'm trying to remember, well, at least think of what else to say about this movie. But um, what would you give this movie, Luke? Uh, Overall, I think it's on par with Dawn, maybe a little better. Uh, I don't remember what I gave that, but I think I'd probably give it around an 85, 90%-ish. Okay, that's, okay, that's fine. Um, personally, I think this is the best in the trilogy. I would have to say that, yeah, it's definitely as good as critics say it is. I wouldn't say it's like a 90-something percent out of 100 on Rotten Tomatoes, which, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't like Rotten Tomatoes, if you don't know exactly, um, if you're new to this channel, but... I would say that I'm kind of debating if I like this more, the uh, first one with Charles Heston. But if they do make another one, they might as well just make it Planet of the Apes again. Just redo the Charles Heston story. Mm -hmm. They just might as well do it by this point. Because I don't know if they make any more plans to make any more. If they do, they should just do that. Just might as well. It's just inevitable. Do it already. Mm -hmm. Um... But again, I do think, yeah, the beginning, the middle, I mean, the beginning and the ending were really excellent. The middle was kind of iffy. It kind of slowed, slowed down a down, bit. Yeah. yeah, and it was nice to see some surprise cameos, and I won't spoil that at all. So I would give uh, War for the Planet of the Apes about three to three and a half stars out of four. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. I'm right about there. Okay. So, um, I think one last joke. There's a part in the movie where a lot of the apes are taken and they're figuring out how to, like, get out of there. And then I lean over to you, Luke, and said, Hey, um, I guess they finally made an ape escape movie. <laughs> yeah, ape escape. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, my fr a friend of mine shared, like, uh, someone photoshopped the Ape Escape video game, and they showed, like, Bill Cosby on it, oh, and it said Rape Escape. No. And my comment was, yeah, there's going to be a prequel game where it shows Roman Polanski. No. <laughs> That's awful. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, this is Tyler from End Credit Reviews. And this is Luke from The Passenger Seat. Yes, that's right. We haven't done Backseat Boys in ages. We no, need to get a lot a more. Yeah, we should gather people for either Dunkirk or Vlad. Valerian. Valerian, yeah. yeah. That that movie needs a better uh, sounding title. Yeah. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of After the Credits. Hope to make more in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe.